Cornell Woolrich rarely spoke about the films made from his stories, but he is on record as hating this one. He felt writer Roy Chancellor took too many liberties with his novel when pairing it into an 81-minute feature. Truth is, Woolrich rarely watched, let alone enjoyed, any movie made from one of his tales. Considered collectively, however, those pictures are some of the most distinctive films of the noir era. Phantom Lady, Deadline at Dawn, The Chase, Fear in the Night, The Guilty, Night Has a Thousand Eyes, The Window, No Man of Her Own, and his stories continued to be adapted in the decades to come, both in America and abroad. For Roy William Neal, however, this turned out to be the last film he'd ever make. The Irish-born director, whose real name was Roland de Gostry, got his start as an assistant to legendary director Thomas Ince, and he directed more than 50 silent films before becoming a reliable maker of B-movies in the 1930s. In the 40s, he found his perfect métier, creating most of the exceptional Sherlock Holmes films made by Universal. Now, besides those films and Black Angel, the, he only made a few other movies during the 40s, including Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman and 1944's Gypsy Wildcat, a Maria Montez vehicle with the distinction of being the last credited screenplay written by James M. Kane, author of The Postman Always Rings Twice and Double Indemnity, which doesn't mean it's any good. After finishing Black Angel, Roy William Neal returned to England for a vacation where he died unexpectedly of a heart attack at 59 years of age. This was only the fourth film for 26-year-old Constance Dowling, who played the ill-fated Mavis Marlowe. The native New Yorker had a blazingly fast start on Broadway while still in her teens, including working with theater legend Ilya Kazan, who cast her in the 1939 production of Quiet City, which led to Dowling having a long-running affair with the married director. When Kazan told her he had no intention of leaving his wife, Molly, Dowling opted to try her luck in Hollywood. Unlike June Vincent, who had made dozens and dozens of B-films before breaking through briefly to A-pictures, Dowling was cast in top-shelf films straight away, although the good luck didn't last long. By 1948, she opted to work in Europe, where her most famous role would be as the lover of renowned Italian poet and novelist Cesare Pavese. Their tempestuous and ultimately disastrous love affair is what many people believe prompted Pavese, one of the great Italian writers of the 20th century, to commit suicide in 1950. His last novel and his final poem, titled Death Will Come and She Will Have Your Eyes, were both dedicated to Constance Dowling. Noir fans will no doubt be familiar with Dowling's sister Doris, who played Alan Ladd's unfaithful wife in The Blue Dahlia, among many other roles in a career that stretched into the 1980s. Constance, by contrast, made her last feature, the loopy sci-fi classic Gog, in 1954. She died of cardiac arrest in 1969, only 49 years of age. Okay, you won't have to wait long for another movie based on a Cornell Woolrich story. Next week, I'm presenting a picture that until recently was one of the hardest to find titles in his filmography. It's a B picture from Monogram with much the same DNA as today's story. Merely by throwing his shoes at a noisy cat next door, a guy finds himself facing a death sentence for murder. And it's not the cats. Although I might pass a death sentence on anybody who hurts a cat. Join me back here next week for I Wouldn't Be In Your Shoes. Until then, see you in the shadows.